Elliot O'Donnell, the famed Anglo-Irish ghost hunter, was dining with a very old friend when the friend suddenly said, Do you believe in vampires? O'Donnell was immediately interested and said, Tell me, I am listening. Well, the friend said, I had an extraordinary experience a few months ago, and the horror of it so overpowers me that I feel I must share my secret with someone. And you? Well, I know that you're an authority on such matters. After lighting a cigarette, the friend commenced his story, which went like this. I had been away from England for nearly three years. In Canada, eh? A few nights after my return, I was dining at my club when someone tapped me on the shoulder and turning round I saw my old friend, Stamford. As I had no idea he was in London, you may imagine my delight. He joined me at dinner and we went over old times together. Stamford wanted to know if I had heard anything from our mutual friend Jack. I said I had had a few lines from him about six months previously announcing his marriage but that I hadn't heard from him since. Stamford then told me that he had not seen Jack since his engagement or even heard from him. In fact, he had written to him twice, but had received no answer. There were whispered rumors that Jack was looking ill and unhappy. Hearing this, I got Jack's address from Stamford and made up my mind I would run down and see him. About a week afterwards, I found myself stopping outside a beautiful English country house, which appeared to be entirely isolated from any other dwelling. A few more minutes, and I was standing before a blazing log fire in a fine old hall, eagerly awaiting my old friend. I didn't wait long before Jack appeared, and with slow painfully slow steps crossed the hall to greet me. He, he, he was wasted to a shadow, and, and I felt a lump rise in my throat as I thought of the splendid athletic man I used to know. He made no mention of his wife, and though I was naturally anxious to see her, I was glad that Jack and I were alone. We chatted together regardless of the time, and it was not until the first gong had sounded that I thought of dressing for dinner. After getting dressed, I was going downstairs when I suddenly felt, I suddenly felt that I was being watched. I looked around and, and could see no one, but I heard a low musical laugh just above my head, and looking up, I saw a figure leaning over the banisters. The beauty of the face dazzled me for a moment, and the loveliness of the eyes, which seemed to shine a red gold, held me spellbound. Presently, a voice as lovely as the face said, So, you are Jack's chum, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen then came slowly down the stairs, and slipping her arm through mine, led me to the dining room. As her hand rested on my arm, I remember noticing that her fingers were long and thin and pointed, and the nails so polished that they shone red. Indeed, everything about her shone red, with the exception of her skin, which shone white. At dinner she was lively, but she ate and drank very sparingly, and as though food was disgusting to her. Soon after dinner I felt so exceedingly tired, tired and sleepy, that I found it almost impossible to keep awake, absolutely impossible to keep awake, and I asked my host and hostess, to excuse me. I woke up next morning feeling languid and tired, and while shaving, I noticed a curious red mark at the base of my neck, 
I, I imagined I must have cut myself, shaving hurriedly the evening before, and thought nothing more about it. But the following night, after dinner, I experienced the same, the same sensation of sleepiness and felt as if I had been drugged. It was impossible, I impossible to keep awake, so I again asked to be excused. On this occasion, after I had retired, a curious thing happened. I dreamed, or at least I suppose I dreamed, that I saw my door slowly open and a woman carrying a candle in one hand come noiselessly into the room. It, it was Jack's wife. She was clad in a loose red gown and a great rope of hair hung over one shoulder. Again, those red gold eyes looked into mine. Again, I heard that low musical laugh and this time I felt powerless either to speak or to move. She leaned down nearer and nearer to me. Her eyes gradually assumed a fiendish and terrible expression, and with a sucking noise, which was horrible to hear, she fastened her crimson lips to the little wound on my neck. I remembered nothing more until the morning. The place on my neck, I thought, looked, looked more inflamed, and as I looked at it, my dream came vividly back, and I began to wonder if it was only a dream. I felt frightfully rotten, so rotten, that I decided to return to town that day. And yet, and yet I yielded to some strange fascination, and determined to stay another night. At dinner, I drank sparingly, and making the same excuse as on the previous nights, I retired to bed. I lay awake until midnight, waiting for I know not what, when suddenly the door gently opened, and I saw Jack's wife. Slowly she came towards me, gliding as stealthily as a snake. I waited until she leaned over me, until I felt her breath on my cheek, and then, then I flung my arms around her. I, I had just time to see the mad terror in her eyes as she realized I was awake, and the next instant, like an eel, she had slipped from my grasp and was gone. I never saw her again. I left early the next morning, and I shall never forget dear old Jack's face when I said goodbye to him. It is only a few days ago I learned of Jack's death. The moral of the story... It's a bad thing to covet your friend's spouse, but it's worse when they covet you. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,022 subs in 2022. And I'm so close now. So close. So why not subscribe today? Or tonight. Or first thing tomorrow. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's PX here, while the music was Unseen Horrors. Unseen Horrors by that patron of the internet, 
Kevin McLeod, Unseen Horrors, a piece that always makes me think of the old Hammer Horror movies. <laughs> 